oxidative cleavage of alkenes. That's going to be the topic of this lesson. And we're going to go through ozonolysis, both under reducing conditions and oxidizing conditions. And we'll also talk about permanganate cleavage, which gives the same product as ozonolysis under oxidizing conditions. Now, this lesson is part of my new organic chemistry playlist. I'll be releasing these lessons weekly throughout the 2020-21 school year. So if you don't want to miss one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications. You'll be notified every time I post a new lesson. So now we've got one last set of reactions for alkenes to cover, and technically these are not addition reactions. So it's what's referred to as oxidative cleavage. And the most common way to do this is called ozonolysis, and it involves ozone, which is O3, the structure of which is right here. So uh, we're not going to show the entire mechanism, but we'll show just a little bit of it to get our appetite wet here. So your alkene actually reacts with ozone here, and does something looking like this. So to form what's called a melosonide. This melosonide is going to rearrange to an ozonide. It takes a couple of steps. And again, I'm not going to show the whole mechanism, but you get this lovely ozonide. And it's this ozonide that actually is going to undergo step two. And so typically for ozonolysis, you've got step one, which is ozone. And then step two, you've got some variability there. And you might add a reducing agent or you might add an oxidizing agent. And so we have two different sets of conditions for ozonolysis. We've got reducing conditions and we've got oxidizing conditions. And it's all about whatever you add in step two. Now for reducing conditions, we're typically going to use, so dimethyl sulfide, which might be written as DMS. That could be step number two. So, or you might see commonly zinc and water used for step two as well. So there's your ozonolysis under reducing conditions. Uh, under oxidizing conditions, we'll use a mild oxidizing agent. In this case, for step two, we'd use hydrogen peroxide. And this is gonna slightly affect what products we get. Now, if you look at what's kind of going on here, so I like to think when I look back at my original alkene, if I want to predict products of ozonolysis, I just cleave that alkene in half, hence the name oxidative cleavage. So I'll cleave it in half and then I will oxidize both sides to make it oxidative cleavage. And so if we did that here, so cleave both sides and so, and then oxidize both sides, that means give a double bond to oxygen to both sides. And so if you look, the top product here is a ketone and the bottom one here is an aldehyde. And for the aldehyde, you typically want to draw in the hydrogen that it's also bonded to. One time we draw a carbon hydrogen bond, and I don't know why. So, but get a ketone and an aldehyde. Now ketones are ketones, and they're not oxidizable under any normal means, but aldehydes can be oxidized to carboxylic acids. So when you do this under reducing conditions, either with dimethyl sulfide or zinc, so an aldehyde stays an aldehyde. Your reducing agents keeps it from getting oxidized, and so you get your aldehyde. But if we did this under oxidizing conditions instead, so your ketone again is still a ketone, not gonna change, but your aldehyde is gonna get oxidized to a carboxylic acid instead. So again, your ketone is still a ketone, but instead of an aldehyde, you get a carboxylic acid. Cool, so if you're predicting the products of ozonolysis here, again, just cleave your carbon-carbon double bond in half, so, and then give both sides a double bond to oxygen. If either side is a ketone, great. That's never gonna change regardless of the conditions. But if one of them turns out to be an aldehyde or both, so that's when the conditions matter. So if you use reducing agents, aldehydes stay aldehydes. If you use an oxidizing agent, peroxide, then your aldehyde is gonna become a carboxylic acid for your product instead. Cool, we got one other way we can pull this off instead of ozonolysis. Turns out we can do the same cleavage, uh, oxidative cleavage with permanganate. So, and if you recall, we used permanganate a little bit ago to do syn dihydroxylation, but we used it and it was cold and dilute. Well, now we're using it under much harsher conditions. We're using it with hot concentrated and under acidic conditions here. So, and this does the same thing as ozonolysis under uh, oxidizing conditions. So permanganate is definitely a strong oxidizing agent. And so again, we get a ketone just like we did before. And ketones are always going to be ketones for oxidative cleavage, but instead of getting the aldehyde again, we get the carboxylic acid. 
cool. Don't have to know the mechanism for the second one. So and the truth is I've never seen students responsible for the mechanism on ozonolysis either. I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just saying it's unlikely. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, consider giving me a like and a share. A couple of the most helpful things you can do to help promote the channel. And if you're looking for the study guide that went with this lesson, or if you're looking for practice problems involving alkenes, check out my premium courses on chadsprep.com.